officially <laughs> or unofficially, as the case may be, we're going to start uh, our Tai Chi practice for today. So this is a Tai Chi lunch break. A little bit, um, maybe you're not watching it at lunchtime. It's hard to say. But in any case, we'll do about 30 minutes worth of Tai Chi. So we're going to concentrate on the yang form today. Um, we've done up to the end of the waving hands like clouds in previous young lessons if on the YouTube you can look um, in the Tai Chi playlist for the others um, For those of you live <laughs> We're gonna go over the part. We've already learned several times and then we'll put one more move on Which gets a little bit more exciting because there's a kick involved. So we'll do that move today and then we'll just keep building this road or building this form a couple moves at a time or one move at a time um, over the next couple weeks till we get the whole form together and then we'll just practice practice all right so we're gonna do a little warm-up first so lift up onto your tiptoes and come on back down and see how far up onto your tiptoes you can get before things go awry <laughs> come on back down tiptoes come on back down tiptoes come on back down we're gonna try to sustain it so we'll see if we can hold ourselves up on our tiptoes for five four three two one and then come on back down all right so we're gonna take one leg put the foot on the floor so that your toes are up or the heels in the air but the toes are resting on the ground and then we're just gonna spin around the ball of the foot just give a little circular movement to the ankle joint the knee and the hip Go the other direction with your circles. Give that leg a little shake out, and then we'll do the other side. Same idea. Foot's on the ground. We're just gonna kind of spin around the edge. Give it a little shake. All right, so then we're going to let ourselves sink a little bit into the hips and a little, you know, soft with the knees. We're going to turn at the waist and just let the arms kind of hang loose. So it's a little bit like. Um, a washing machine agitator. We're just going to go back and forth. These are the old fashioned kind of washing machines, y'all. Not the kind you load from the front. <laughs> Not the old, old fashioned ones, though. Those were done by hand. <laughs> so we're going to just move back and forth. Now, if you keep your head still, sometimes there's a little release in the neck as the rest of the spine turns around it. So you can see if that works better for you. Take two more, two. All right, and then we're gonna take one arm up and one arm down. So we're gonna bridge heaven and earth, stretch between the two points. Stretch between the two points. I like to turn it into a bit of a side bend too, because that feels nice. shoulders a little lift and a drop a lift and a drop lift and drop oh. All right give each arm a little shake now we're gonna do this little uh this little qigong movement and it's um I like to refer to it as meridian fluffing <laughs> so there's meridians that lie just under the skin um, uh, that go down the inside of the arm and up and the outside of the arm, down the outside of the leg and up the inside of the leg. And so we're going to essentially just trace a pattern. So we're going to start at the heart and go down the inside of the arm, up the outside of the arm, down the outside of the hip, up the inside of the leg, down this side, up this side, all the way around to the arm, to the inside. Okay, let's just go inner arm, outer arm, 
outer hip, inner hip, inner hip, outer, all the way up. Oh, arm, arm across. So we're gonna do that. And you just, it's not a lot of pressure, it's just a little bit. Because we're just really moving the skin <laughs> on the outer and inner portion here. side and across. Now we're going to do it again one more time with just a little padding motion all the way down, up, down, up. Oh, we're going to take over <laughs> and across. And just tap right on your collarbones or right on the breastbone. And then just pause and see how that left you. Usually the reason I call it birdie and fluffing is because it makes me feel kind of fluffy. <laughs> like my electromagnetic field has gotten a little bit bigger. It might not work for you, and it's possible that I just have a really vivid imagination. <laughs> so I'm willing to accept that possibility. Now the young short form is going to take me this way for numerous steps um, before it takes me back this direction. So I'm going to start kind of tucked over in this corner so I have a little bit more room to go inside this camera view. So wherever you want to start is fine. We start in what is essentially mountain pose from yoga. Um, it, it's called the earth posture <laughs> in this, or translates as earth posture, if you will, um, in this particular notion of things, which is not that different than mountain pose, frankly, and probably might actually be more accurate. <laughs> but in any case, we're gonna pause and just get steady. Steady your mind. If you like, you can rest the tongue so that the tip of the tongue just touches the back of the upper teeth. Um, if that's not comfortable, just let your tongue rest comfortably in your mouth. So we're going to start by letting ourselves kind of get heavy in the legs. Weight is in the right leg, so the left leg can step out a bit. And then as the weight shifts to level, we're going to sink in a bit more and come up over the ball. So we're going to imagine our arms tracing over a ball. I'm going to shift the weight to the right so I can turn my foot to the left. Shift my weight to the left so that I can turn a bit on the right side. And then I'm ready to come out on my left. My, all my weight's in the right leg and I'm holding a ball. So I'm stepping out to part the horse's mane. I'm going to come back. Stepping out right to part the horse's mane. And coming back. Stepping to the left. And one more time, this time I'm going to step in halfway with my right foot, take all my weight back, and turn. This is the white crane spreads its wings. I get a little bit dramatic with my arms so you can keep them a little closer to you. Turn the palm. We're going to let this arm drop back as we turn to the right. And then I'm going to step with my left foot, brush my left knee, and push. Come up so that your hips point forward. Come back. Turn to your left brush your knee and push rock back turn to your right last one here step brush your knee and push take a half a step in you're going to lift your toes left arm is up right arm is protecting the elbow of the left strumming the lute or guitar now i'm going to step back to repulse the monkey so my right hand is going to be like it's pulling back a bow and then hugging the planet okay pull back the bow Hug the earth. <laughs> Pull back a bow. Hug the earth one more time. Pull back a bow. Hug the earth. So I'm going to step back, sweep my left arm under, step out. I'm going to ward off and then reach up with both hands to grasp the bird's tail. Shift the weight back to the right. Let your hands follow through. Shift your weight to the left. Push the wrist to follow through, pull a ball onto your toe, and then push that away like a mountain, okay? Turning towards the center, I'm gonna be stepping out to my right. So step, ward off, grasp the bird's tail, come back, and the arms just follow the weight shift, okay? Weight shifts towards my right leg, Arms push the wrist forward. Pull a ball onto your toe. Push the mountain. And then we're going to come around to center.
center again. The weight's going to shift. I'm going to make a little shape with my hand and step out to catch the tiger by the tail. I'm going to shift back over here to the right. And then this becomes waving hands like clouds. So my weight shifts and I turn at the waist, and when everything comes to one side, I step it in, okay? Weight shifts, everything comes to the opposite side, I step out. Weight shift and turn, step in. Okay, we got one more. I'm going to take the tiniest little step, so I have a little bit of extra room here on the camera view, I hope. Step in. So we're going to come around again. I'm going to once again make this little crane shape and step out to catch the tiger's tail. I'm going to gather my right knee up, kick out, put the foot down, and box my opponent on the ears. Now this is the move we haven't learned yet, okay? So we're going to go over that move again in a moment, but just to show you how those things connect, that's gonna be the next move, is a kick on one side and a kick on the other. I'm gonna relocate myself when I teach you just that move. But that's where it's gonna to thread together. So what we're gonna do before we get to that again is we're gonna review the Yong short form that we've done so far two more times just as a review, just as a warm up, okay? So let's come back over. We're getting close to the end here, y'all. <laughs> the end, like we're getting close to the end of the form. It's really exciting. So we're going to pause for a moment, let ourselves find our balance, weight to the right, step a bit to your left, sink in as deep as your knees allow, come over the ball. Weight to the right, okay, weight to the left, and then we're going to step out to part the horse's mane, <laughs> come back, step right, back, step left, half a step in, white crane spreads its wings, okay, the set up here for brush knee and push, one, let yourself turn all the way forward so you don't wrench your knee here, two, three, from your guitar, stepping back to repulse the monkey. One more of those. And then I step back to grasp the bird's tail. to the front so that we can step out again to the diagonal, grasp the bird's tail, push the wrist, ball, mountain, coming around. Okay, so this is going to turn into catch the tiger's tail. Waving hands like clouds. With this form, we're not in a rush, but we're also not necessarily moving in a hyper slow motion. The young form falls somewhere in the middle. There are some forms that are quite fast, some forms that are super slow. We're gonna grasp the tiger's tail again. Um, this form is very much in the center of that. It's not particularly slow, not particularly fast. All right, so we're gonna do it one more time through, and then we'll do the first kick, and then I'll back up and review both kicks for you from a couple of different angles, and then we'll try to put it all together, okay? So one more time, through the short form that we know, Find your earth posture. 
feel centered, let your eyes get a little softer in their focus. Weight to the right, and we're going to step out to our left. Opening the door. Parting the horse's mane, three of those. White crane spreads its wings. Set up for brush knee and push. And there's three of those. I've got one more. And then we strum the guitar or loot, depending on who you ask. And then we've got stepping back to repulse the monkey, four of those. And then our fourth step back, grasping the bird's tail. up the center so that I can grasp the bird's tail on the opposite side. And then around to the center that I can step out to catch the tiger's tail. This is sometimes called single whip as well. And then waving hands like clouds. And I basically just like to take the time to sort of enjoy the feeling of the movement. So not so slow that it makes me super wobbly per se, but not too fast. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> the Tai Chi form is a circuit, so it just winds up where it started, so there's no reason to hurry. And no reason to linger in particular, so we just move at a pace that feels comfortable. So again, we're going to step out to catch the tiger's tail. I'm going to take like a little sort of half lean, so I'm putting my weight into my left leg so that I can gather my right leg up, okay? And so this is the beginning of a kick, which is a really slow motion kick, and there's a bit of a linger here to challenge the balance, okay? So I stepped out, and then putting that weight into that left leg, I come to this right tiptoe, and then I'm gonna cross my arms like this, okay? So cross the arms, lift the leg, and then I'm gonna open my arms. So the right leg, right arm is outside. Right on, so closest to my heart, left arm in this case. Right arm is on the outside, so I can easily open that arm. If I do it the opposite way, then my arms are gonna kinda get in the way, okay? So I'm gonna pick up the right leg, right arm's on the outside. Then I'm gonna open up so that the left arm goes up and the right arm goes out towards the leg. And if you can put your leg higher up, fine. If your leg needs to stay lower, it's lower. Then we're gonna put that foot down and this is called boxing ears, right? So the palms face out, make a little light fist, and then it's like you're coming around someone's head, so about that distance apart, okay? So that's the first kick. Let's do that through with the tiger's tail move about three times, okay? So we step out, pick up the leg, kick it out, put the foot down, box ears. Okay, step out, pick the foot up, kick, box ears. Okay, one more time. There we go. 
tiger's tail. Right leg up, kick out, box ears. Now, we're gonna do another kick facing the opposite direction. We're not gonna box ears at the end of this because that will it turns into a move called the snake creeps down. But it's the same kick formation, okay? So to get there, after we've boxed ears, we're gonna pivot open, right? Weights in my right leg, I'm gonna pick my left leg up, kick it out, and then I'm just gonna drop like this. So I have a snake hand, can you see my snake? <laughs> and then my left hand is in the middle between my face and my hand so the snake can't get me. Ah, ah, ah. I'm being dramatic. <laughs> but in any case, I've got a snake and some protection from the snake, okay? So that's how I'm gonna end my second kick. So my first kick, I boxed ears, pivot open, arms open, put that weight in your right leg, pick up your left knee, open, snake, okay? Snake by your ear. All right, so let's try that from a different angle. So I'm gonna take a little turn this direction, about 90 degrees, and show you it again. So I'm gonna step out, catch the tiger's tail, gather my right leg, kick out, box ears, spin, okay? Pick up, kick, land. All right, let's try that again. So I'll show you from this angle once again, and then I'll show you from the back. <laughs> so I'm gonna step out to catch the tiger, pick up my right leg, kick it out, box, spin. Okay, I'm gonna rotate a little bit on that right leg so I can pick up my left knee kick out. Oop, I want to hold that if I can. Oh, <laughs> you lose your balance, you lose your balance. So I'm going to pick it up, kick it out, snake, right on. Ideally, I could hold that balance for a few seconds. Didn't happen today. All right, let me try it from the back. So from the back, I'm going to step out to catch the tiger, bring my right foot in, pick it up, kick it out, box ears, pivot, okay, left leg comes up, kick out, land with a snake beside you, right on, let's try that one more time, oh. incidentally, I know it's complicated, <laughs> you just have to do it a whole bunch of times and it'll click in, all right, catch the tiger's tail, we're going to Pick up our right leg, kick it out, box ears, come around, pick up our left leg, kick it out, <laughs> and land theoretically more gracefully than that with a snake beside your head. Some days I have good balance, some days not so good. All right, so I'll show you from a couple of angles. Hopefully that's helpful. But now what we're gonna try to do is put that into the flow, all right? So we'll do just the waving hands like clouds and the two kicks, and then we'll put the whole thing together. So after I push this mountain, I come around and I'm gonna step out to catch the tiger by the tail and wave hands like clouds. And your knees can be quite bent. I try to keep mine soft, but some people bend them quite a lot. So this is up to you and your knees, okay? I got one more cloud to go. I'm gonna try to make it a small step <laughs> so don't go too far off your frame. And this is where we're gonna step out to catch the tiger, pick up our right leg, kick it out, box ears, okay? Pivot left, right foot follows, left foot up, kick it out, snake by your ear, okay? Let's try that again. <laughs> I push the mountain. 
mountain, come around, come around, step out to catch the tiger, I'm making that a little smaller motion, <laughs> waving hands like clouds. One of my favorite. I <laughs> love waving hands like clouds. It's so delightful. One more time. Alright. So I'm gonna step out to catch the tiger. Grab my right leg up. Kick it out. Box. Come around. Pick my left leg up. Kick it out. That was better. <laughs> snake creeps down. So I'm going to grab my little snake. All right. That's how we have fun with Tai Chi. So let's go um, all the way to the beginning and we'll try to work through the whole thing a couple times. Maybe we can do three. All right. So again, I'm going to kind of start over this way so that I have a little bit of space for the open part. And then more or less it covers that same territory as we go through these different um, movements. <sighs> Whatever happened before, we're erasing the chalkboard now. Everything is new, okay? Starting from beginner's mind, we're gonna take the weight to the right and step out so that we can sink in and open the door. And then there's the setup. or my horse is made. Three of those. White crane spreads its wings. Set up for brush knee and push. Three of these. Step in, strum your guitar, stepping back to repulse the monkey for these. And then I step back one more time, and this turns into my grasping the bird's tail, okay? Step out at the diagonal to grasp the bird's tail. And then we come around. And this is my setup for catching the tiger by the tail. And then ultimately waving hands like clouds. these. I've been known to put 12 of these in, <laughs> given a long stretch of empty beach <laughs> with plenty of room to roam. <laughs> Step out to catch your tiger. We're going to bring this right leg in, kick, box, rotate left, right, left foot comes up, kick, snake. <laughs> Excellent. It's very exciting, you guys. This is fun. I love the young short form. Oh, we have 
have to creep our snakes. We have to do some pheasants. There's a needle at sea bottom and some fair maidens. And then kind of some punching and parrying and then an end. That's, we're, th we're there, we're about, I don't know if we're two thirds of the way, but <laughs> probably about two thirds of the way through. So if this feels like a lot, it is, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to remember. We just start one day at a time. Let's do it again. So find your earth posture, erase your chalkboard mentally, everything is new again. So we're gonna step out a little, arms come up over the ball. We're gonna get ready for our horse's mane, and then we're gonna step out. Step out, step out, half a step in, white crane spreads its wings. And then we'll drop this whole thing around and brush our knee, coming back, brush the knee and push, coming back. Brush the knee and push, half a step in, strum your lute, draw back the bow, stepping back to repulse the monkey. Now we're going to turn this into the bird's tail sequence, so we step back, set up, we're going out to the diagonal here and come in to the front diagonal. So the hips and the core move first and everything else follows with the expression, okay? Coming around and then we're going to step out to our right, grasp the bird's tail to the left hip diagonal. Push your wrist, all on the toe, push the mountain. <laughs> Even with limited space, we can make this work. We're gonna step out to catch the tiger. You have a lot of space, you can step big. <laughs> Waving hands like clouds. Make sure your arm is about level with your head or so. So head and belly. One more time. Try not to rush. It's just the right timing. We're stepping out to catch the tiger. Picking up the right leg. Kicking out. Kick it up the left leg, kick it out. Snake by your ear. All right. It's very exciting to me. <laughs> so we're gonna do it again, and I'm gonna do it um, facing the other direction so that you can see it from the back in case that would be helpful. It might be easier. I don't know what the mirroring is like, but it might be a little easier to follow that way. So, We're going to find our earth posture. We'll get to the close to the edge here. And then I'm going to step my left foot out, sink in, pull the ball up. Half a step in. White crane spreads its wings. And this is my brush knee and push sequence. Brush knee, push. Brush knee, 
Vrashni push. I'm gonna get pretty close. Vrashni push. Half a step in. Strum your guitar. We're gonna pull back the bow and step back to repulse the monkey. I'm gonna step back one more time. And this is gonna take me into my bird's tails, okay? So I'm gonna ward off, reach up, and come down. Push the wrist, pull the ball onto my toe, push that mountain away. Come around to the center. I'm gonna step to the diagonal. Grasp the bird's tail, push the wrist, pull the ball up, push it away. We're coming around. We're going to step out to catch the tiger. And then we're going to wave hands like clouds. Step out to catch the tiger, pick up the right leg, kick it out, box, okay, coming around, pick up the left leg, kick it out, hi <laughs> there, and snake by your ear, okay? So I don't know if that was helpful or hurtful, <laughs> but I think it's helpful to um, practice from different directions or to go outside, do some inside. When you're learning Tai Chi, if you get oriented to the space around you, it's hard to get your body to remember the things, okay? So if you can do Tai Chi in different environments, it can be helpful for your body to learn the memory and not your eyeballs. So, I don't know if that helps, but maybe. All right. <laughs> I may be <laughs> overdoing it, y'all. So forward fold. Oh, give yourself a little bend. I lost track of time with my clock. Oh, give yourself a big stretch. Oh. Oh. And then <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day. So we're gonna bring the right hand to a fist, the left hand comes in friendship and humility, and then we bow to our opponent who helps us be a better person, which in my world is really my ego. <laughs>